Hello everyone, this is week two of our physical activity course. Um, this week we're going to be exploring some of the global issues around physical activity all around the world. We have a course full of people from many, many countries, from over 150 countries I think. So, um, it's, so week two is going to be really interesting to hear everyone's stories and today I'm talking to Nancy Rollinson. Hi Nancy. Hi Rachel. Nancy is, um, I've known Nancy for quite a few years and Nancy has worked in, so Nancy is one of the our facilitators on the course so you'll see Nancy in the forums but Nancy has worked in many different countries around the world haven't you Nancy? I have been a few. Yeah and so so we thought it'd be have, nice to have a chat to Nancy about, um, perhaps Nancy you could tell us a little bit about yourself, your story and how you, where you've worked and sort of how you came to work in all those different places and what you've been up to. To. Okay, so I am a physiotherapist um, and been qualified and working in physiotherapy for about 20 years now, I guess, isn't it? Um, and I started my career in the NHS in the UK and, and worked in hospitals here and did all the kind of the standard rotations and built some experience. And then I went and worked as a VSO, so a voluntary service overseas physiotherapist in a small Pacific Island country called Kiribati. Um, which is kind of where the Dateline and the Equator cross. Um, and I worked there for the Kiribati Ministry of Health. And my role was to develop rehabilitation services and to work a lot with the Disabled People's Organisation as well. Um, and then I popped back into the UK and worked a bit again in clinical service delivery. Um, and then I started to work for Handicap International. And I worked for them in... Bangladesh for the Bangladesh program and then I worked for the Cambodia Thailand program and then more recently for the Sri Lanka program so each each kind of uh, contract was two two and a half years and my role was very much as a disability technical coordinator type position so I had responsibility really for the quality um, of the projects that we delivered and so, and you've had some, tell us about your experience in the public health side of things as well. Okay, so I did a Master of Public Health actually, which I finished about five years ago. And that was very much um, due to my experiences, I guess, from, from working more in international development and working um, in different countries. I think I became a lot more aware of um, the different impact of kind of like the economic, the social, the environment that people lived in and more aware of kind of health equity. A lot of the work that we were doing was concerned with access to services. And I think that when we work as physiotherapists, we work quite often on a very individual basis with people. So I wanted to be able to understand a bit more about how to work at community level. Um, and I think the other thing that I found really interesting about public health is that we looked a lot at behaviour change, um, how and why people do the things that they do, um, and community development, actually. So it's something that I found really, really uh, useful for the work that I've been involved in. So now I feel like I want to talk to you for hours, but we're not <laughs> going to extend this for too long today. Um, so you've worked in many different places. Um, how... What kind of patterns and trends have you seen in physical activity in the different places that you've worked in and, you know, the differences and similarities and things? I think it's very variable because I think, obviously, it's very linked to culture. It's very linked to climate and kind of the environment that people live in. It's very linked to um, urban or rural settings. So I think there's so many different kind of influencing factors. Um, and the environment that people live within that kind of influence our physical activity. Um, I think that uh, my role became not so much one of a traditional physiotherapist either. So I think through those opportunities, I, I worked a lot more kind of at community level in some countries. Um, and that also impacted on the way that I was able to work with, with physical activity. <laughs> So I was trying to think for you for some interesting examples. So I think when I worked as a VSO in Kiribati, we had a programme, a Healthy Island Initiative, really, from WHO and, and the Fiji School of Medicine. And it kind of had the four axes of uh, nutrition, alcohol, smoking and physical activity. 
And really, it was something that was introduced to combat or to try and work with the very high prevalence of diabetes. Um, so a lot of our work as physios was um, working with people that had amputation or who had had strokes and kind of, um, diseases obviously linked, linked to their diabetes. Um, so, yeah, from the physio department, we were kind of tasked with spearheading really the physical activity component of this programme. And we started that really, I guess we started small and we worked a lot with staff members and kind of raising awareness amongst staff at the Ministry of Health. And then we expanded out and we worked a lot then with different community groups. And a lot of our work really was kind of raising awareness on the links, I guess, between diabetes and physical activity, but also looking with people at kind of their lifestyle and things that they could do that was kind of um, appropriate um, in the context that they were living in. It was quite a tough place for people to exercise. Already people had quite physical lives. A lot of people lived there um, by fishing and it was small kind of uh, coral atolls. Um, a lot of people took up walking, which seemed to be kind of an activity that was, you know, possible to do with the climate and the environment that people were living in. Um, so I think, um, I mean, that's a really nice example. I think um, it's really important for us to remember that we all live in completely different contexts, don't we? Um, and I think this, this, the discussion forums are going to be really useful for us to learn from each other the different contexts and the different kind of barriers to physical activity and also how um, how we can influence behavioural change. So I just, have you got, what are your thoughts on sort of how we might influence, you've already mentioned it, how we might affect behavioural change and what kind of barriers there are and what kind of, what are your thoughts on that? I think it's to be very realistic and try and understand people's life situation um, and and I think very often it's to try and identify what people actually enjoy doing or what's available and to build on that and to be able to see with people ways that they can access and be included perhaps within it. Um, I think one of the other reflections that I have is that my role has been quite different. So I think when you're working in a very kind of clinical role and perhaps you're more hospital based and perhaps um, you don't see the links with community programs or you don't have the opportunity to work with people outside of a hospital setting. Um, in the UK, I've worked with people in neurological conditions in kind of outpatient setting. And with that, we I've done kind of like multiple sclerosis exercise groups, but always then with the idea of trying to look with people how they could take maybe the increased confidence that they've got from having a startup session in a more kind of medical-based setting, I guess, and taking out into community groups. Um, at the moment, I'm working back in the National Health Service in the UK with adults with learning disabilities, so quite a big part of my job is doing hydrotherapy or aquatherapy with people. So again, always looking with them about what will they do when the course of sessions is finished and community pools that they can access and maybe working with their caregivers to be able to see with them how they can support people to go into the water. So I think it's always trying to kind of think one step ahead. And yeah, I think you've brought up some really, really interesting um, thoughts that people should think about this week, uh, in particular, thinking about different contexts around the world. So because we all we all work in our own context and that there are many different contexts around the world and people may not work in those other contexts, but it's always useful to bear them in mind and to have a broad idea of physical activity around the world but the other thing that you just brought up that's really interesting is that there are the different contexts of people that work in the very medicalized settings and mm. kind of the more community or maybe even just home settings and things like that so it's so those are going to be different approaches to affecting behavioral change for physical activity as well so I think that discussion could be really interesting mm. um is there any other just be is for week two about global the global issues surrounding physical activity are there any sort of final messages from your experiences that you'd like to leave everyone with i think my other experience is really with handicap international so we had 
projects where we worked a lot with kind of socioeconomic inclusion and we had projects where we worked a lot with rights of people with disabilities and we also had more kind of classic I guess physical rehabilitation type projects. Um, always our work was with people with disabilities and we had some really um, very good projects in Bangladesh and also in Sri Lanka for inclusive sport, culture and recreational activities. Um, and often we targeted children and young people. Um, and as I said, it, it was inclusive, so it was like children and young people with and without disabilities kind of exercising together. And I think one of the big impacts of that is because it's so very visual and we always did it kind of in, in maybe in the school playground or you know in the community setting where people would do physical activity together. And it really kind of challenged stereotypes. And I think it helped a lot of people with disabilities that we worked with, maybe that would be reluctant to go out and be involved in physical activity um, to be able to see a way where they could be included and participate um, alongside everybody else. So I think it's it's to, to try and be creative, isn't it? And to work with people and find out what they're interested in but also maybe to be aware of what's going on in the community around you. So even if you're not directly working within it, there are ways that you can help people to access. Because from a kind of a more long-term perspective and something that's a bit more sustainable, you want people to try and engage in something that they enjoy because they will continue then with it. I think that perfectly your message, a really good message. And I think... Um, really interesting to hear your experiences and I hope that um, everyone can take something away with that into week two with them on these global issues and I think you'll so you'll be around in the discussion forum and if anyone's got any specific questions for Nancy um, you can ask those in the questions discussion as well um, so yeah Nancy it's been really interesting to hear about your experiences they're really interesting and and, and hopefully we can tease more out of you in the discussions so thank you very much Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.